This is Marv Albert. You probably recognize him by his famous voice. He's been working in radio, television, and broadcasting for over 50 years by now, and nowadays he's usually the main play-by-play -play announcer for NBA games on TNT. Although now he's older and makes a ton of mistakes in his commentary, for example, Onto Tukumbo! 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 Yeah, but even though he's not as crisp and precise with his commentary as he was when he was younger, he still has an amazing voice. In my opinion, he's right up there with guys like Kevin Harlan and Mike Breen when it comes to announcing games. They're all really awesome to listen to. But there was something that happened a long time ago that really damaged Marv Albert's reputation, and up until today, some people are still shocked that he even has his job. So in the late 1990s, television was becoming a huge deal. Unlike today, where many families and households are cutting cable and ratings are dropping across the board, back in the 90s, television ratings experienced a huge boom. Sports in particular became massively popular, especially when bigger networks like NBC or ABC started to broadcast games every single week in front of a rapidly growing audience. Sportscasters experienced more fame and fortune than ever before, and while some of them were able to handle the fame pretty well, Others, like Marv Albert, used his fame as a way to take advantage of others. By the 1990s, Marv Albert was all over the news and recognized as the voice of basketball. He turned basketball commentary from something that was monotone and kinda boring to something that fans wanted to tune in to hear. His commentary style was very exciting, he would get hyped up when someone makes an amazing play. And for the people who watched the game on TV, Albert's voice made the game so much more fun to watch. Right back, Miami gets back, and George in the face of Bosch! Surely not a facial! First of the TNT doubleheader, James accelerates and put it down! <laughs> LeBron James going baseline and then soaring! Rashard Lewis playing off the ball. Lewis... Gets it to LeBron for three for the win. Yes! LeBron James at the buzzer! He was also an incredibly popular figure. Even if you didn't watch basketball, you knew who Marv Albert was because his voice was everywhere. As of now, he's made a total of 126 appearances on The David Letterman Show, and he also appeared on numerous TV shows and movies, including The Simpsons. That's how well known he was during that time. Unfortunately, around September of 1997, Marv Albert's name was all over the news again, but this time, it was not a good thing. A 42-year-old woman named Vanessa Perhotch accused Marv Albert of throwing her on a bed in a hotel room, biting her on the back and neck over a dozen times, and also forced her to perform oral sex. Yikes. Initially, Marv tried to deny everything and said that Vanessa was lying, but after a couple of DNA tests were performed and the investigators found out that genetic material from the bite marks were from Marv, and that his semen was on Vanessa's underwear, yeah, there was no getting out of that. Marv still firmly stood his ground with this whole biting thing though, he claimed that she told him to bite her, and then he just went along with it. Marv also thought that everything that happened in that hotel room was consensual. According to a quote from a newspaper, he said, I thought she was my friend. What happened, what she did to me is just unbelievable. And then he followed that up by saying, they had a 10-year relationship that was purely sexual, so I guess he was surprised she brought him to court. Anyway, during the trial, there was a testimony from another woman named Patricia Mosden, and she stated that a few years ago in 1993 and 1994, Marv Albert also bit her on two different occasions. Patricia also claimed that Marv invited her to his hotel room, and apparently she saw him dressed up in white panties with a garter belt. And while dressed like that, he tried to make sexual advances towards her. Jeez, that's pretty damn weird. Marv was also engaged at this time, so he would show up to the trials with his fiance, who had to hear all of this too. Eventually, he would confess and admit that he did do everything he was accused of. And subsequently, he would, of course, get fired by NBC. 
Marv pled guilty to assault and battery and had to serve a 12-month suspended sentence, which means if he doesn't break the law during that 12 months, then he'd be free to go. And that's what happened. Marv stayed out of the public for 12 months, and that was it. He didn't have to go to jail or serve any time at all. Now, normally, if you're a huge, popular public figure like Marv Albert, and you get into a huge scandal like this, your entire image and public perception would be damaged. But less than two years later, Marv was back in the business. TNT hired him in 1999 to be their play-by-play -play announcer, and then in 2000, NBC, the company that fired him a few years ago, rehired him. Part of the reason he was able to get his job back just two or three years after the scandal was because he had a lot of friends in the industry. With a blink of an eye, this whole sexual assault scandal was swept under the rug. Marv was back in the spotlight and most of the general public did not have any issues with it. Even today, most NBA fans don't even know that Marv Alberts, one of the most iconic voices in NBA history, was at one point biting women and forcing them into some weird sexual acts. That sums up the story, but what's interesting to me is how easily Marv got away with something like this. If this story broke out today, Marv would be crucified. It would be all over social media, and in today's era, there'd be no way he'd be getting off the hook that easily. I mean, he didn't even serve any jail time or get any real punishment at all. It would be something that stuck with him forever, and it's very unlikely he'd get a job in the public like this again, because companies that want to hire him would get a ton of bad press from the media. But as we all know, in the 1990s, the world was a different place. Everything was different, social standards were different, gender standards were different, public perception was not as critical as it is today, partly because social media did not exist back then. Nowadays, everything that famous people do are observed under a microscope. That's just how it is. And overall, I guess you can say certain things were not as big of a deal as they are today. But that's a whole different topic that I don't want to get into. Anyway, that's all folks. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed that video, and I'll see you next time. Peace.